Hey folks, Jordan with TYT, TYT Politics. I am in Miami, hence the Miami Dolphins hat. Hope you're having a nice day. Mm -hmm. Try to get a little more light here. Uh, yeah. That's the best I could do. Um, I wanted to report to you on some breaking news. I'm not in Flint, but I have sources uh, on the ground there who are at a meeting. Uh, in Flint, as you know, there was an emergency manager in place. Uh, in the state of Flint, in the state of Michigan, uh, that was making the decisions for Flint. So essentially, an unelected uh, administrator was the one who decided to switch from the Detroit water system to the Flint River, and we all know what happened. Um, now, that emergency manager is no longer in place, but there is something called the Receivership Transition Advisory Board that is in place. The Receivership Transition Advisory Board is essentially plural. It's, it's, it's basically four emergency managers, but they're not called that. So they were appointed by Michigan Governor Rick Snyder, who, as you know, was the governor when the water switch happened, uh, who kept his head buried in the sand for a year uh, after residents were complaining, uh, and who has done nothing since to help the residents of Flint. Uh, other than charge them and other residents in the state of Michigan uh, upwards of $12 million to defend him and uh, other state officials uh, who are facing legal challenges in con connection to the Flint water crisis. So this Receivership Transition Authority Board is a group of four businessmen who were appointed by Rick Snyder. So essentially, they are proxy for Governor Rick Snyder, and the Receivership Transition Authority Board has the power to overrule the mayor of Flint, Karen Weaver, as well as the Flint City Council, which is nine elected officials. So right there, what you have is not democracy. You have an unelected board that could essentially come in and overrule the mayor of Flint who was elected and the city council. Okay, so we've established that. The Receivership Transition Authority Board, I believe, meets uh, the second week of every month uh, to basically look at what the mayor and look at what, uh, you're right, Sovereign, it is a dictatorship, to, rule what the, to look at what the mayor uh, and the city council are voting on and all these things. So, essentially, the city council uh, had voted uh, weeks ago to place a moratorium, meaning a break, a pause, on tax liens that were being charged to 8,000 homes in Flint. The tax liens were being placed on 8,000 homes because these homes did not pay for their poisoned water bill. So let me just make sure you understand that. More than 8,000 homes were getting notices that they were going to have tax liens placed on their homes, which could produce foreclosures and evictions, obviously because they didn't pay for the water bill that they still can't drink the water or use the water because the water is still full of lead and bacteria despite what the EPA says, which as I've reported, isn't exactly 100% correct. Okay, so the Flint City Council, in response to outcry from residents, the residents should be mad, uh, placed a moratorium of one year. Uh, the vote was eight to one in favor of placing a one year moratorium, which means the tax liens would not go into effect. As in everything else, all the votes, uh, all the votes of the city council go to the Receivership Transition Authority Board, which either allows uh, the elected officials, their votes to stand or overrules them. Well, the Receivership Transition Authority Board uh, just met about an hour ago, and they have decided to overrule the city council, meaning that there will be meaning, hold on, Sorry, I lost you for a second. Meaning that there will be no moratorium on uh, the tax liens. The tax liens will go forward uh, for those 8,000 homes. Uh, sources on the ground said the Receivership Transition Authority Board gave no real reason except to say that it was going to consider the need to fund the deficit created by the City Council's refusal to agree to the Great Lakes Water Authority contract. Uh, and as a factor in allowing the tax liens to be enforced. All right, so if you're a little lost, right now, uh, Mayor Karen Weaver has put forth uh, a water plan 
that the city of Flint will stay on Detroit's water system. The city of Flint was on Detroit's water system for about 50 years. Uh, Detroit's uh, water and sewage was renamed the Great Lakes Water Authority. So Mayor Karen Weaver has put forth a plan for Flint to stay on the Great Lakes Water Authority system for 30 years. Uh, and the state of Michigan is very, very um, hell-bent on getting that passed. The city council of Flint met last night and they need more information. So they did not vote uh, to enforce Mayor Karen Weaver and what the state of Michigan wants, which is to stay on the Great Lakes Water Authority. They wanted more information. Um, it's very interesting that the state is trying to ram through this Great Lakes Water Authority 30-year um, contract uh, they're hell-bent on it. And now the reason the Receivership Transition Authority Board gave today for not uh, basically approving the Flint City Council's uh, moratorium on the tax liens was saying we need to consider the need to fund the deficits created by the City Council's refusal to basically pass the 30-year the contract for the Great Lakes Water Authority. Translated, if you do not approve the Great Lakes Water Authority contract, we're going to keep tax liens on lead-poisoned residents. That's what they're saying. That is what they're saying. So why, then, are they so hell-bent on pushing this 30-year contract with the Great Lakes Water Authority? Again, this is the original Detroit water system that Flint was on for 40, 40 to 50 years with no problem. Then they switched to the Flint River temporarily while this privatized pipeline was being built. We all know what the result was. But now, essentially, the city council had voted. We're going to place a one-year moratorium on the tax liens. The mayor, Karen Weaver, agreed with that. And now this unelected board, appointed by Governor Rick Snyder, who, by the way, won't release any of his emails prior to the year 2014 so that we could see, well, what was what was his statements or involvement in the decision-making process on why they switched from Detroit to the Flint River? Wouldn't we like to know? Wouldn't you like to know what the governor's uh, involvement with that was? I would, but Michigan has the worst freedom of information request laws in the country. Very hard to get, uh, as a journalist or anybody, get emails or information uh, from powerful officials and government officials. So basically this RTAB just voted to essentially punish the victims who have been lead poisoned and worse in Flint. They're gonna place tax liens on their properties and possibly evict them and foreclose on their properties. America, land of the free, where you're poisoned and then you pick up the tab. That's what this is. Let's not make any mistake about it. So I wanna also uh, read to you a letter that the state of Michigan sent out to the city of Flint on Friday, which further, uh, let me move this backwards, which further puts into question if all of this is really a scheme to get this Great Lakes Water Authority contract rammed through, which then we have to wonder, why are they in such a rush? Why are they in such a rush to push forward this Great Lakes Water Authority and who's benefiting from it and who's making money off of it? Because it's always the money. Follow the money, right? So here's the letter that was sent to the city of Flint by the state of Michigan on Friday. Uh, the information available to us indicates that the city council has refused to approve the agreement negotiated by Mayor Karen Weaver, whereby Flint will enter into a contract with the Great Lakes Water Authority to purchase finished water. One more time. The Great Lakes Water Authority is the renamed agency. It used to be Detroit's Water and Sewage. Flint got its water from Detroit Water and Sewage for 30 years. Okay. Uh, any further delay by the city council in approving that agreement or attempt to force a change in the water source will create an imminent and substantial endangerment to the public in violation of the United States Environmental Protection Agency's January 21st, 2016 emergency administrative order, as well as the settlement agreement in concerned pastors first Corey and the state and federal versions of the Safe Drinking Water Act. Okay, there's a lot in there, so let me explain it to you. Basically, the state of Michigan is telling the, the Flint City Council, if you do not approve the 30-year contract for the Great Lakes Water Authority, you will be in violation of a January 2016 EPA order. 
That is a lie. Plain and simple, that's a lie. The January 2016 EPA order said before any water switch can happen again in Flint, which obviously that's what caused the problem in the first place, the water switch, before any water switch can happen, there needs to be six months of testing and all decisions need to be approved on a federal basis. What they're talking about is not a water switch. The decision to, to sign the contract, the Great Lakes Water Authority contract, is not switching because they're already on the Great Lakes Water Authority. Really what the state wants and, Karen and the mayor wants the city council to vote on is keep staying on the water source, Great Lakes Water Authority that they're on now, and signing a 30-year contract. So them, the state, threatening the city of Flint, saying you are, you are in violation of the EPA's order from January 2016 is a lie because the EPA order is simply about water switching, switching from one source to another. This is not switching from one source to the other. This is staying on the source they're already on. So that's the first lie. Then they say, uh, the sentence says, any further delay by the city council in approving that agreement or attempt uh, to in the attempt to force a change in the water source will create an imminent and substantial endangerment to the public in violation of the United States Environmental Protection Agency's 2016 order, which I just told you about, the settlement agreement in concerned pastors first Corey. So the settlement agreement, if, you're, if you recall a few months ago, concerned pastors, uh, a Flint resident named Melissa Mays and some other plaintiffs had sued the state of Michigan and they won a $97 million settlement. And of that $97 million, most of it is going towards replacing an estimated 18,000 uh, lead and galvanized service pipes. So the service lines, which have all been destroyed in Flint and are 60 to 70 years old. So they're saying you would be in violation of that settlement. That settlement has absolutely nothing to do with whether this Flint City Council approves staying on Great Lakes Water Authority and signing a contract for 30 years. So that, that's not true either. Uh, that settlement was approved by a federal judge and a federal judge had mandated the state of Michigan, the state of Michigan is getting help from the federal government too, to pay the $97 million to pay for 18,000 replacement lines. Has absolutely nothing to do with whether the Flint City Council approves staying on the Great Lakes Water Authority. So again, the state of Michigan is essentially lying uh, in this threatening letter to the uh, city of Flint and the, the Flint City Council. And they also mentioned you'd be in violation of the Safe Drinking Water Act if the Flint City Council does not approve the 30-year contract. That sounds suspect to me. I don't really know why they would be in violation of the Safe Drinking Water Act. Uh, the city of Flint and the Flint City Council has, been, has in front of them several options for the future water source. So I don't particularly know why not approving the one the mayor wants and the state wants would be in violation of the Safe Drinking Water Act. Each of these violations provide an independent basis upon which the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, Michigan Department of Environmental Quality are the geniuses that decided not to put anti-corrosive controls in the water when they switch from Detroit's water system to the Flint water. That's the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality. Each of these violations provide an independent basis upon which the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality and the state of Michigan can act. The basis for our contention are more fully set forth in Director uh, Greather's June 15, 2017 letter to City Council President Nelson and Mayor Weaver. So basically what you have here is the state of Michigan, frankly, working with the mayor to threaten the city council that if you do not approve the, the contract that we want, which is for Flint to sign a 30-year contract with the Great Lakes Water Authority, we are going to overrule the city of Flint, council, the Flint City Council, which this advisory board just did today. They overruled their vote to place a one-year moratorium on tax liens. They're basically saying, if you don't sign this contract, we're going to keep the tax liens on the citizens that have been poisoned. That's exactly what that means, folks. You can't make this stuff up. And the reason they do this is because no media covers it. Even the local media, frankly, in Michigan, doesn't cover this stuff and doesn't say what's actually happening. So let me, let me, I just want to make sure you understand this. Can you imagine in 
any wealthier upper middle class community, if residents uh, through no fault of their own were drinking, drinking contaminated water and poisoned, can you imagine the government placing tax liens on their homes for not paying for the poisonous water? And then for those tax liens to be essentially used as a noose around the neck to force the Flint City Council to vote for a 30-year contract to stay on the Great Lakes Water Authority. That is blackmail, it's extortion, whatever you want to call it. And again, this is not democracy. This is not democracy. So you have uh, the corporate democratic establishment, the corporate media, they're railing for the last six to seven months. Our democracy is under attack from Trump. Our democracy is under attack. I agree with that to, to a certain extent. But what I try to report on every day, what my colleagues try to report on every day, is the quiet attack on democracy that nobody else covers. The residents of Flint should not be charged. They shouldn't be charged for the water, period. But secondly, placing tax liens on their homes, homes that they can't even sell, by the way, that have no value because of the Flint water crisis. Do you know how many residents I've spoken to? You know, they, they hear, why don't you move? Well, are you going to buy their home that's been devalued? and is still contaminated. So basically, the Receivership Transition Authority Board, an unelected board appointed by Governor Rick Snyder and whose right-hand man, Rich Baird, who is the Governor Rick Snyder's, essentially his henchman, he's called the, I think his title is Transformation Manager. Again, Transformation Manager. Rick Baird, Rich Baird is in charge of this RTAB, and essentially they vote how he tells them to vote. And again, Rich, Rich Baird is the right-hand man for Governor Snyder. So let's not have any illusions, folks. This board is, the proc is our proxy votes for Governor Rick Snyder. So essentially, Governor Rick Snyder is the mayor of Flint, Michigan right now, making the decisions. And he, he is keeping these tax liens in place on the citizens of Flint. It's him. Sure, it might be four people voting, but it is him. So we're, suppo uh, you know, we're supposed to rant and rave over Russia and collusion and all this stuff. Meanwhile, you have poor, white, black, doesn't matter. Flint is 56% African-American, but there's a lot of poor white folk too. You have poor folks in the city of Flint who not only have been contaminated and poisoned, but let's look before the water crisis. The city of Flint is a symbol for the controlled demolition of the middle class of America. Flint and Detroit used to be the hub of the middle class. Yet General Motors was born in the city of Flint. Uh, 40 years ago, when uh, if I were driving through the, the streets that I recently drove in Flint, you'd see vibrant suburban communities, kids playing outside. You'd see industry, uh, bustling storefronts, uh, bustling downtown, um, real middle class uh, suburbia. Now you drive through, some streets kind of look like Iraq or Afghanistan. You got burnt down houses, empty lots, uh, lawns that haven't been mowed in God knows how long because industry was sold out. Our federal and state government sold all the jobs offshore. They de-invested, deregulation, tax cuts for the rich and corporations. And what you have is what you see on blocks in Flint, on blocks in Detroit, on a lot of blocks that I visited in the deindustrialized de Midwest. And now, to add insult to injury, they're going to keep tax liens on poisoned citizens of Flint. Basically, to force the city council to approve their contract, which begs the bigger question, why do they want this contract so bad? Why do they want them to stay on the Great Lakes Water Authority so bad? Something doesn't smell right here, folks. Something does not smell right. I'm in Miami right now. I got a little sunburn, maybe a little color. I'm gonna continue looking into this because make no mistake about this, I wanna be clear and I always say this, this is not just about the city of Flint. If you think this doesn't concern you, or doesn't concern the, the, the broader national scene, you are mistaken. Because if we allow these things to go on in Flint, it's coming to you next. It might not be water contamination, but it will be you next, whether it's environmental racism, whether it's financial schemes that screw you and your family, 
whether it's uh, police brutality, whatever it is, if we allow the government to essentially terrorize the citizens, whether it's intentional or not, maybe it wasn't intentional that they poisoned the citizens. I don't, you know, there's no proof of that. But if you allow the government after poisoning the citizens that they're elected to represent to basically stomp on their car, stomp all over their carcass, we don't live in a democracy and we certainly don't live in a country based on humanity. This is wrong. And this is something that real journalists have to continue to expose. And if you choose uh, to activate yourself and do something about it. But make no mistake what happened today, folks. The unelected board chosen by Rick Snyder overruled the Flint City Council and decided to keep tax liens, which might mean foreclosures and evictions on lead poisoned citizens in Flint. That happened in America right now. And I promise you, CNN and the fine folks at the New York Times aren't covering it. I'll continue. Share this video. Follow me at Jordan Charidan on Twitter. Uh, subscribe, youtube.com slash TYT Politics. Uh, if you click on playlists, you can watch, I think we have like 80 videos already uh, from my reporting in Flint. And I will continue to stay on this. Have a good day.